History bombs. Sorry. Oh, etiquette. Manners maketh man. But where do they come from? It's time for the history bomb of British etiquette. And we kick off in ancient Egypt? What? Now, manners are a rather ancient concept, first proper by a man called Tahotep. I wrote moral inscriptions for ancient Egyptians, maxims on kindness and moral convictions. Fast forward to medieval living. Manners were relaxed, lots of hugging and kissing, but life was to change for these easygoing mammals with manners from the continent crossing the channel. Dear chaps, without wanting to cause upheaval, your behaviour is decidedly medieval. Men should bow, not hug and slap, then ladies should respond with a curtsy back. And for the height of refinement, one can go better still by using one of these. A confusing utensil. They call it the fork. The latest thing from Italy. Good day to you, sirs, and try to act with more civility. So behaviours and cutlery were changing in the early 17th century, and the European influence continued as Charles II returned from France to take the throne. Charles bore with him French fashion and the concept of politeness, along with rather elaborate rituals. Sir, Charles is back, it's the restoration, and behaviour has a wonderful French persuasion. Oh, really, Diggory, you're such a fop. This fanciful behaviour really must stop. Oh, calm down, dear, that's really not fair. My refinement of manner is highly debonair. Well, suit yourself, but I've had enough. I'm going for some air, and I'm taking your snuff. It wasn't only snuff that was a big hit. Charles II's wife, the Portuguese Catherine of Braganza, is widely recognised for popularising a simple beverage that proved to be hot stuff with the British public. Um, I think there's something wrong with these coffee beans. They're not beans, they're dried tea leaves. Oh, dear, are you sure you're feeling yourself? Of course, they're from China. Very good for one's health. Oh, yes, I think I read about that in Rattler. Don't you mean Tatchler? Oh, yes, my dear, the world's moving at such speed. Now, tell me your news while we sample these leaves. Tea became a daily ritual that is still adored to this day. From 1789, French aristocrats were facing grave danger as the French Revolution swept the nation. With discontent abroad, the British upper classes were keen to distance themselves from their European counterparts. They quickly shut their flamboyant French affectations. It was out with the perfume and powder, and in with dark coats and cravats, as dandies took to the scene. Oh, Edmund, I do adore your new wardrobe. You're ever so dashing in your modern clothes. Well, thank you, Harriet. That's very astute. It takes me five hours to dress, so I'd better look cute. Well, you really look lovely. Your outfit's meticulous. Do you think so, Jane? Miss Austen. Yes. Doesn't Edmund look meticulous? I think you're both ridiculous. Jane Austen provided fierce criticism of social etiquette, behaviour which she viewed as excessively fanciful. Miss Austen sadly died in 1817. Our story continues, however, and by the 1830s, drawing rooms and the handshake were all the rage. Good Lord, man, what's come over you? Is it not clear this is the drawing room? Meaning it's where we withdraw after dinner, not a room dedicated to sketching my sister. My apologies, I'll be on my way. With a stylish handshake, I bid you good day. Whatever. In 1836, Queen Victoria came to the throne. Her reign witnessed tremendous progress, along with a rather draconian code of etiquette. Miss Stewart, let us review your schedule. You have much to learn, your failings are several, your standard of behaviour is very low, and I think that's quite enough, piano. Now you shall Need those, I think you'll find we have no interest in your intellectual mind. We focus instead on command of the fan and the meaning of a flick of the hand. Away from the mainstream, the aesthetic movement emerged in the late 19th century. It was all very arty, championing beauty and a sophisticated lifestyle. Okay, that brings us to the 20th century, which is, um, oh, that way. The 20th century is generally thought of as witnessing widespread relaxation of etiquette, but it's not quite that simple. At the dawn of the 20th century, the Edwardian era was still defined by adherence to a strong sense of appropriate etiquette and manners. Ah, here we are. A toast! To 1910, a golden age for gentlemen. A wonderful time of refinement and progress, of peace in Europe and industrial success. Oh, how wonderful to be young with seven course dinners and endless fun. We can travel at will, even across the Atlantic. And look here, some tickets for the Titanic. A youthful optimism cut down by World War I, an event that began to loosen the shackles of British etiquette. The Great War, a terrible tragedy. Man is less crucial now than morality. Etiquette changed, subtly less formal, in a nation rebuilding from something so awful. Three more decades in another world war saw a dramatic change in etiquette as self-expression came to the fore. The 60s, yeah! And now we have manners for special events, but generally etiquette's less intense. Still, being polite can be tricky. Men can try to find a line between sexism and chivalry. Texting has affected grammar massively. OMG! Abbreviate a blasphemy and as for the internet, we'll go take a look. Simply Google etiquette on Facebook. Essentially, etiquette's about respect. That hasn't changed since Tai Hotel. And on that note, we'll say our goodbyes. It's now very very good etiquette to click subscribe.
Scooby-Doo doll of my friend Tabitha. Um. I stuck some pins in its legs. Next day, she couldn't walk. <laughs>